Virginia surprised a lot of teams in the 2021 season. This is a squad that really shined offensively, and it was a big reason for surprising everybody. And a 6-6 six and six record was their finished bowl game. It got canceled. And then they lose Bronco Mendenhall to retirement. Tony Elliott comes in, and there's a lot of key pieces that return to make this team fairly exciting once again. When you look at who is returning, the offense is going to be with plenty of firepower still. And when you look at the defense, there's a number of key pieces that will give them a solid group on that side of the ball as well. Let's look at the top 10 for the Virginia Cavaliers for the 2022 season. Number one has to be Brennan Armstrong. The lefty was phenomenal last year, 4,449 yards with 31 touchdowns. And obviously you would like to see the interceptions go down a little bit where with his 10 picks does have a little bit of running ability. I think when you're looking at what Brennan Armstrong brings to the table, it's a guy who is not afraid to sling the football. He has good touch on the ball. He can throw with some great zip. We've seen that in some of the connections he made last year. And I think that when you're looking at dark horse Heisman candidates, he's definitely up there has to be up on the top of the list. He's a guy who probably doesn't get as much attention as he deserves, but this is a, a player that's going to thrive in, in Tony Elliott's system, and when you look at the talent that he has around him, there's no reason to believe that Virginia won't be as explosive, if not more, in 2022. Dontavian Wicks came not really out of nowhere if you're a Virginia fan, but for the rest of college football, no one really expected him to have the season that he had. It caught 57 passes last year, over 1,200 yards. He averaged 21.1 yards per catch with nine touchdowns. He was Brennan Armstrong's go-to target, and it's easy to see why. He's a reliable pass catcher. He comes down with pretty much anything you throw his way, and that's a thing that quarterbacks really love in their top receiver, a guy who's going to be that reliable pass catcher, someone who's going to catch the football and not make passes that they throw that look really, really good and turn them into drops and kind of kill momentum there. Wicks is an explosive talent. That's a, You don't just average 21 yards per catch on 57 catches and, and not be very good. And, and I think that he's going to be a guy who gets a lot more attention and that leaves room for other people to step up, but he's still going to be a big-time threat. The defense doesn't get a ton of love, and, and neither does Nick Jackson. 117 tackles, six tackles for loss, and two and a half sacks. He is the leader of the defense. And again, like I said, because the offense was so explosive, it's tough for guys on the defense to get a ton of attention, mostly because they're on the field more than your average defense. Because your offense is so uh, fast paced and doing what they can to score as fast as possible, the defense really gets a lot of more pressure. And that means that they're on the field more. That means they're probably getting tired more. And they just don't usually thrive as a unit. But Nick Jackson is an all-conference type talent. He's a tackling machine. And I think it's going to be fun to watch him again in 2022. And when you go back to the offense, Keaton Thompson is a guy who does a little bit of everything for this offense. If you need the definition of a versatile weapon, Thompson is your guy. Whether you want him at quarterback, if you want him at tight end, wide receiver, running back, they put him literally everywhere. I'm pretty sure he played defense if they allowed him to do that, but they they obviously don't. But Keaton Thompson is a big body receiver. Uh, he's now listed as receiver. At one point, he was listed as an athlete, and I think that his skill set makes life a lot simpler for any offensive coordinator and they don't have as many first-time weapons as they did last year. They had two other guys that really stepped up and played that role as well as he did. And now it's kind of just him. But still, that's more than a lot of teams can say. And when you watch what he was capable of doing, this is an explosive player who had a big year. And I don't think people realize that he had over 1,000 yards last year. And he had six touchdowns, averaged uh, – he, he was just – Honestly, he had a year that we don't really talk about enough, but he's an exciting player. He gives that offense a different look, and it's a guy who, if you're a defense, you have to prepare for literally everything because he does literally everything. Now, Tony Elliott did go into the transfer portal. He was able to get Cameron Butler from Miami of Ohio to transfer, and the, tra the Red Hawks transfer had 53 tackles last year, 
14 tackles for loss and eight sacks. I think that he is a great addition to this defensive line. I think the defensive line needs a little bit of help, need a little bit more uh, talent, proven talent. And, and like I said, the defense doesn't get a ton of love, but they do have talented players, and Butler is another name to pay attention to. Now, lost in, I think, a lot of this explosive play from guys like Wicks and Thompson is the fact that there is a slot player for Virginia that is reliable and does a lot of good things for this offense, and that's wide receiver Billy Kemp. 74 catches last year, 725 yards, 9.8 yards per catch, 6 touchdowns. It's not anything flashy, but it gets the job done, and sometimes that's just what you need. You need a guy who's going to get you the yards that you need. And if it's in a short yardage situation, third down, fourth down situation, and you need a guy to make a play, this is the kind of guy that you need. Billy Kemp is reliable. He's going to make life easy for Brennan Armstrong when things aren't going well in the deep ball. If things are open, Billy Kemp is going to be the guy that's open for him as a check down or on a shorter route that's going to get them the yards that they need. And speaking of reliable, Anthony Johnson at corner is a reliable option, and you look at what he had for stats last year. Three interceptions, which was towards the top of of the team in terms of interceptions there. The, again, the defense gets uh, probably not as much attention as they deserve, especially with the number of talented players that they have. But a guy like Anthony Johnson is going to be tested week in and week out because of the receivers that he faces at practice. Now, the ACC has a bunch of good receivers, but he's not going to be overwhelmed because when you face guys like Wicks and Thompson, it gives you, and even Kemp, you get a lot of different looks and that prepares you for game day. Another one of the guys that you probably don't pay attention to because he was hurt last year, so obviously you didn't see him. Two years ago, Laval Davis was averaging 25.8 yards per catch. Now, it was only on 20 catches, but that's still impressive because five of those catches, a quarter of his catches went for touchdowns. This is another big play receiver. You add that to Wicks, Kemp, and Thompson, and this is one of the better receiving groups in the country. And Brendan Armstrong's numbers, like I said, have a potential to be even better because he has targets like Davis coming back that make life really difficult for the guys trying to guard him. A guy who's getting a chance to step up is Mike Hollins at running back. Now that it's kind of his backfield, and he's the starter. His stats are kind of a little bit misleading, because when you look at the film, this is a guy who is much more talented than what those stats indicate. And I think that he's set for a bigger year, a career year for him. And with the offense that they have and everybody really expecting the, the pass to be the predominant choice of play, I think that the running game will have a chance to open up. Even with the offensive line going through a transition, I think that Hollins has a, a bigger year because teams are going to lay off and, and try to allow uh, Brennan Armstrong to beat them when they're dropping back coverage, and that leaves openings for Hollins. And finally, Hunter Stewart, a guy who I also think is going to step up. He had 37 tackles, three and a half tackles for loss, and two sacks last year. I think that he gets a chance to step up with next to Nick Jackson. You look at what the linebackers have done for Virginia over the past couple years, and obviously if people know about Jackson. They're going to try to defend against Jackson, and that leaves openings for guys like Hunter Stewart to step up. And I think that he is going to have a good year for Virginia. And if his defense can take a step forward, this Virginia team also does the same.